<laughs> yeah, I'm so used to you starting, John, when we come together. So I don't really know how to start. I was kind of I weird. Mean, I, can, I can if you wish. I'm happy to. I, I figured I would let you, but uh, I can begin. All right. So uh, welcome to this discussion, this sort of uh, sidebar opportunity that we have to look at the body from another perspective um, that I believe is going to be very supportive for all of the work that we are doing through the whole immersion and really just for life in general. Um, we can probably zoom out as far as we possibly can and see benefit to the life process as it is moving through us. So um, today we're going to talk about some nutrition and um, uh, uh, possibilities for how we can optimize the experience of well-being in our bodies and hopefully share a little bit about our personal experiences with that. So, Bella, do you, do you have something you'd like to please share about that to begin? Yeah, that's the part that I am excited about because, of course, research and statistics and kind of proof on things, that's really, really good. But it's often as a fourth line when I hear something that somebody else tried and that really worked for them and how it worked for them that for me is the most exciting and I think the only reason why I'm actually sitting here right now and we're doing this is because this is one of those products as a fourth line I'm like okay I'll stand on my balcony and tell people and come and have a, a shake with me you know so so definitely I hope we can weave I'm mean, really important so of course the foundation of health that we're going to speak about those few pillars uh, but then also just flow with it and share experiences. Well, I'd love, I'd love to begin, Bella, by just talking about some of the ways that we can support the body to move into a deeper experience of well-being. And I really see this as there being like four core pillars that are needed in nutritional health to shift the body from a state of uh, struggling or striving to function in a harmonious way and moving into an optimal opportunity for well-being where, where the body can truly thrive at the cellular level. And those four processes are the process of absorption, the process of generating energy, the process of the structures that are needed to support that energy. And then finally, the synergy of hormonal balance. And without having these four elements in place, if one of them is uh, struggling, if it's not functioning properly, the other three are not going to function very well either because our body is so um, working as a singular unit. We often look in health at the, uh, when we look at health, we will examine the health of a particular cell or a particular sets of cells or a particular organ or a system in the body that may not be functioning that well. And we treat it as if, it's separate from the rest of the body. And what we're looking at here today is appreciating the body as a whole being. And when we look at one singular cell, that it functions with the intelligence of its re relationship to the entire body, rather than breaking it down into all the separate parts. Of course, we have to kind of like, use our attention in clear ways to understand what it is we're talking about here. But that's why I'm looking at these four different components from, from a very holistic standpoint. So, 
So, shall I continue, Bella? Yes. <laughs> Very good. One of the um, primary things I, I wish to look at about the functioning of these four components is in, at what is impacted, um, what has impacted the functioning of these four components in our bodies today is a chemical called glyphosate. It's a chemical that is used abundantly throughout the United States and Canada, the UK, um, different areas of Europe, and I believe also in Australia, although um, I have to address kind of different aspects of that, maybe towards the end of our, our discussion. Um, glyphosate is a, a categorized as a herbicide, um, but it's truly um, the patent that, that is carried with it is, is actually an antibiotic. So an anti-bio, um, so it's anti-life on a certain level. That's sometimes we need that in our bodies when there are certain conditions present. But in this case, um, it, it kills plant life and it has an impact on our system. So the way that it's used, it was primarily introduced as a, a, a broad spectrum herbicide with the use of GMO crops. That would be corn and soybeans as it's grown for animal feed. And so it began uh, entering our food system stream in the 1970s and became uh, prevalently, more prevalently used in that way in the 1980s and 90s. And uh, what it allows uh, farmers to do is increase yield by disrupting the growth of herb, uh, of weeds. And um, because those GMO crops are resistant to the herbicide. That gets into the animal side of things because the animals are eating the GMO corn and, and soybeans as food. And then the chemical itself goes into the fat of those animals, into the milk products, all of these types of things. Starting sometime in the 1990s, glyphosate began to be sprayed on our regular food crops, staples like wheat, oats, um, rice, other types of grains, because it's used as a desiccant. Um, at, that, at the time of just before harvest, they'll spray it across all of the crops to, to dry it out. This allows for more efficient processing of that food type. Today, more than in North America, at least, more than 75% of the foods, or perhaps this is a U.S. figure, rather, more than 75% of U.S. foods uh, grown and distributed are sprayed with glyphosate, sprayed directly with glyphosate. This includes not just those staple crops that I mentioned, but also a variety of vegetables and fruits. So there's never been a more kind of important time for us to use organic foods. What is the impact of glyphosate on the body system? Well, it directly impacts the first pillar of absorption. In our gut microbiome, we have a variety of bacterias that assist in the assimilation of our of the nutrients of the foods we use. And not only does this chemical kill a wide spectrum of that bacteria, it also impacts our ability to absorb nutrients and flush out toxins. This is done along the intestinal lining with little hair-like structures called villi. And because of that desiccant role that this chemical can play, it causes the villi to kind of um, become 
constricted and dried out and they stop functioning. And that reverses the process in areas of our intestine impacted by this by reversing the absorption of nutrients and flushing of toxins to become an absorption of toxins and a flushing of nutrients. In the areas where this occurs, the intestinal lining becomes inflamed and can lead to tears in the lining of the gut, leading to leaky gut uh, syndrome. And this can cause a um, intolerances to different types of foods. So what we see today is a prevalence of gluten intolerance amongst the human population. Gluten is a protein that was that is found in wheat and is one of the main food staples for many thousands of years for at least a large portion of the world's population. And so it's very interesting today that we have an intolerance to something. So what we see is a correlation in the growth of this intolerance with the use of glyphosate across our food system. So, um, to describe to you how, do, how this impacts us, it, it is correlated to many different chronic diseases, autoimmune diseases, things like type two diabetes, Crohn's disease, in diseases of the intestine, as well as many other aspects of, uh, it's correlated to autism, Alzheimer's, there's, there's a wide variety of conditions and I'm not gonna, going to make a case for causation here. Um, but there is correlation in, in the use of it, of this um, chemical. The last thing that I want to, I wish to share about the impact of this chemical on our systems is that glyphosate is designed to interrupt three primary amino acids, tryptophan, tyrosine, and phenylalanine. If we correlate these to the gene keys, which is a direct uh, study of the amino acids that correlate to the particular energies of our evolutionary systems. We see that these three amino acids are contained within gene keys 2, 8, 31, 35, and 62. If we look at this impact as improper biosynthesis of these amino acids in our system, it's going to disrupt the frequency flowing through these particular amino acids, which will collectively hold humanity in the shadow states of these gene keys, also interrupting the function of their programming partners and potentially the full channels that we can create in relationship with each other. These shadow frequencies are hunger, dislocation, mediocrity, intellect, and arrogance. We can see all of these shadows prevalently across our collective. And their programming partners are Gene Keys 1, 14, 41, 5, and 61. These are the shadows of entropy, compromise, fantasy, impatience, and psychosis. So the start codon actually also takes place in the 41, which is the um, programming partner to the 31. And so when we look at bringing in the higher intelligence of our form, moving into the gift and potentially acidic frequencies of the energies available to humanity, the start codon is interrupted, which scrambles the information that is held in our DNA. So obviously this chemical has wide ranging impacts and consequences to the collective and to us as individuals. So. I think it's so interesting when I'm looking at those keys. So they are collective gene keys and we have the cornering of no return, the 31 and the 62. 
And then also in the middle pillar with the two, which is the form, and the eighth, which is that unique contribution. So I find it very interesting where they are and they, they're either collective or individual in part of that middle pillar. And uh, yeah, it seems very planned somehow that this is where we are stopping humanity, you know, by, by trying to put something in, in order to not allow mutation evolution to happen the way that it will happen eventually. Um, my question here is, so you said something about organic. Do you know, at least here in the US, for example, if when we buy organic, it's it's not treated with glyphosate or can we not know that? No, that is correct. The USDA organic standards prevent the application directly of glyphosate. That doesn't necessarily guarantee that all organic items are completely free of the am amounts of glyphosate. However, in most cases of organic foods, the amount is very, very small. And it would, it would happen through uh, contamination through air, soil, or water through it has been, that it has been uh, carried through. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't address chemtrails today. Um, there's a question from Leslie here about it, it, are what is contained in chemtrails. That's a completely, from my perspective, a side issue. Um, probably worthy of looking at if you're drawn to it, you know. Um, what I can say about this sharing and what Bella's comment about um, it seems planned. Um, one of the perspectives from the gene keys in human design is that the evolution of human, of the collective human consciousness that we are all a part of is going to drive us in particular directions to achieve the divine will, more or less, the 40. And one of the drivers of this evolutionary process, I believe, is the use of this, the widespread use of this chemical throughout North America, Europe, and other places around the world, because it's forcing us to look at the systems that we're using and innovate um, new ways of relating to it. And that's what I wanna share with you today is the innovation of food system that is coming through a particular company called Purium which is a made up word, uh, a combination of the words pure and premium. They offer so far the only proven uh, solution to remove glyphosate from the body as the cornerstone of what they're doing. That cornerstone addresses that first aspect of absorption, the digestion and the assimilation of nutrients in our system through a formula called Biome Medic. Biome Medic is a formula of fulvic and humic acids, uh, as well as wheat germ extract, which has been shown in a variety of scientific studies to bind to the glyphosate chemical and safely remove it from the human system. There's, there's, uh, in the use of this formula in the preclinical trials that were conducted with, with it, 74% of the glyphosate in the body was shown to be removed from a series of participants who were using primarily a non-organic standard American diet in terms of their eating habits, their dietary habits. So little to no organic foods in that diet and, the, and all of those participants were suffering significantly from diseases that are correlated with high levels of inflammation in the body. Things like hypertension, type two diabetes, um, cardiovascular illnesses. Um, they also uh, removed or had showed a 75% reduction in the body's inflammation as measured by C-reactive protein. So in conjunction with the uh, 
this in this formula, what we see is uh, the the fourth element of this formula is a an introduction of good bacteria, the good bacteria that helps us assimilate nutrients and foods. What this formula does is not only remove glyphosate, but it provides the the minerals required for the uh, intestinal lining to be repaired through the humic acid. The fulvic acid assists in, in moving the nutrients of the food we consume to those villi to be fully absorbed by the body rather than being flushed out. So this transforms the function of our gut uh, to be one of regeneration and to absorb the nutrients that we need from the foods we're consuming. The second part I mentioned is the energy generation. The cells of our body absorb the nutrients and through that process of utilizing the nutrients in a variety of ways are capable of producing sustained energy. This company addresses that through a formula, a formulation of foods that are considered superfoods, just whole foods that allow the body to, um, to generate a consistent flow of energy. And when we look at this, the primary one is called the power shake. It's a combination of ancient grains, as well as uh, green chlorophyll rich grasses that allow the cells of the body to both detoxify and to generate consistent energy together. So this is the energy portion. The third element is the structure. In order to build tissues, we require protein and in our system to absorb protein, we have to break protein chains down into their constituent amino acids. There are only nine amino acids that our body cannot produce on its own. And uh, that requires a food source. So we have something called super amino 23. The 23 refers to the time required to absorb these these amino acids and to be utilized by the body's tissues. That's really, really fast if you understand anything about the metabolism. Normally to absorb amino acids, we need to consume a protein source. One of the standards in, in the nutrition world, health world is a lean chicken breast. So our body has to exert quite a bit of energy to digest that chicken breast and absorb the proteins that it contains. On top of that, there's just at, in the best case scenario, a 25% net nitrogen utilization of the proteins in there. What that means is the other 75% of the, the available protein from a chicken breast is gonna be converted into various forms of catabolic waste. That's uric acid and other forms of acids produced in the body that are not conducive for our well, overall well being and are treated as waste products. So there's additional energy required for the body to flush that out. Um, so these super amino acids have a 99.9% .9 net nitrogen utilization. That means there's virtually zero waste and zero energy required of the body to absorb it. So we have essentially the most efficient form of protein available. Uh, on a side note, the proteins were, were created by a doctor for comatose patients to prevent the atrophy of their muscles while they are still in a coma. That leaves us just the fourth element um, which I mentioned is the hormonal balance. And this is a uh, sour cherry juice that's taken close to um, bedtime. And sour cherries are 
regarded as a superfood. They have a higher antioxidant nutrient, uh, an higher antioxidant levels than blueberries by orders of magnitude. So they first have a high dose of antioxidants in the body, and they also provide natural melatonin. This is our sleepy hormone. Having proper amounts of melatonin in the body is a challenge due to the techno technological um, experience in our societies today. Having lights, indoor lights after dark, having blue screens, st staring at our computer screens all day long. This all impacts the natural melatonin cycles in our system. And when we do not produce enough melatonin, we do not get enough deep uh, delta level sleep. That's this brain cycle that, that allows our, our full nervous system to be completely replenished. And this is what really helps healing occur in the body is the um, functioning of that nervous system. So having a natural food source melatonin is very beneficial and allows us to get more of that deep sleep, which triggers a movement of the nervous system to be out of fight, flight, freeze and fawn that Bella brought up in our whole discussion and move into rest and digest. So our parasympathetic state is the one we should be in the most. Most human beings are in a constant adre adrenaline state of fight or flight. So these four components work together, this sleep, the hormone balance with the melatonin actually allows our brains to produce additional serotonin. The healing of the gut is shown to be the main source for, for serotonin production. When we have melatonin and serotonin working in proper balance within our system, the problems of depression, anxiety, and many other mental illnesses are, are right there resolved. People who are using these products have testimonials of vastly reducing or completely going off of the medications they were using for mood enhancement. So whether those were anti-depression, anti-anxiety, et cetera, et cetera, people are going off of those because of the use of these things together. So that's the four pillars, Bella. I like it. And I, I hope I didn't over talk. You help me remember that I need to use these. <laughs> 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 oh my god the blue screen uh blocking sunglasses right and i have red ones sunglasses. before i go to sleep they are red ones and they're bigger ones <laughs> so yeah yes indeed i mean so, I guess, you know this is what i feel that there are so many things that you know we have spoken about that before that we can find out there and you know there are things for sleep there are things for this there are things for that and i love when I hear you speak about these pillars, you know, in, in less than half an hour, we have looked at something that is very complete. And we understand that if we have sleep, if we have hormones levels that are right, if we have absorption in the body of the nutrients, like everything that you're saying is making sense. And it's, again, this holistic view on, on the system that we are. And that's why for me, this solution is something that I understand can be a tool or like a help, something to help so many of us in life. And also the fact that it's 10 months now, I haven't used it all the time, all the products, but it has definitely been with me. And I've been more kind of intuitively uh, feeling into it, whether I was here or in Sweden or traveling. And I think that's also one of the things. It's not that many things. When I hear you speak, it sounds like, oh my God, it's like I have a whole, I need to have a whole fridge or a whole like, um, closet or whatever but actually it's not that many things and it's quite easy to incorporate it in your daily life and even traveling with it yeah i'd actually love to just share quickly what that looks like the biomedic formula is just two capsules that you take 
in the preclinical trials I mentioned, those were based on one capsule per day for six weeks. So those were the impacts that were achieved. I take four biomedic capsules per day, and it's had a significant impact on inflammation in my body. It's had a significant impact on uh, the functioning of my gut and also on uh, the indicators of health that I have as I carry the chronic illness of type one diabetes. So on a daily basis, I take four capsules, two with my first shake and two with my second shake. The, the energy portion, the meal replacement shakes, those are also low calorie, which means that they are absorbed very easily by the body. The body does not have to do a lot of digestion work. So if you look at the metabolism and the amount of energy used by the body to just simply digest our food, this is a massive opening of energy in our system because we're not using it on purely digestion and just trying to deal with what we fed ourselves all day, every day, you know? So it looks like I wake up, I have my super amino tablets I take five at a time. That's the equivalent of 10 grams of protein. I have two capsules of biomedic and I drink a power shake. And then I'm good for, for until the next meal time, which I had, um, I had a shake right before I came on to whole today um, because it got to that time today where I needed the second one. And then, you know, it's super easy. Just those capsules, a power shake, and I'm good for a number of hours. And then I repeat that again for the second time. And then I'll eat one meal during the day, generally. And occasionally I'll snack on some foods in between the shakes. And everybody's metabolism is different. And, uh, the company provides through the guidance of, of, um, you know, someone like myself or Bella to, to be able to understand how to function with these in an optimal way. And the beauty for me is that I haven't had to give up the things that I really value consuming. But one of the main benefits of continuing to eat food along this path is that I don't feel um, I don't feel deprived of the things that I need. Mm -hmm. This isn't a deprivation diet. This is a lifestyle shift that is about incorporating the highest levels of nutrient dense foods into our bodies, recovering this healing process and and, you know, after once I get get time for bed, I have my apothecary juice and I actually feel like going to sleep. The manifesting generator, um, I feel like stereotype is that it gets to be 10, 11 o'clock at night. And we're like, but wait, we've still got millions of things to do today. And I would stay up till 1, 2 a.m. in the morning. Now I take apothecary and it makes me sleepy at like 1030 and I can go to bed at 11 p.m. and sleep through the night and wake up refreshed. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, I have two things. The first one, when you speak about how you're taking those things, you know, in the day that are not really in a way food, but food replacements. I'm thinking about Richard Rudd in Jinki 28, when he says like, one day we're going to be mortal and we're going to have those concentrated little things with, with nutrients in them. And it's possible to be, to be limitless and to be mortal. And that's of course the city uh, of, of Jinki 28, which is my Jupiter and my moon. So of course that's kind of driving me. However, that brings me into another thing. And this is, again, the uniqueness of who we are, that we can see in design, that we can see in how we live our lives. For me, when I started these products, I started with, with that kind of the package that you're speaking about, but I didn't 
stop eating not even because often what i've what i understand the first 10 days you are doing a kind of detox and that's how you start for me because i guess i've done detoxes forever and i also do very regularly hilda clark's programs i just didn't feel that for me that was the, the right thing so i did similar to what you were saying you're doing now is how i did it and also like i have said so many times in whole like i have my PHS, it's thirst, you know, like <laughs> cold. So I'm going to have all these drinks as well. I don't need to stop my kombucha or my San Pellegrino or, you know, any of the things that I that I have in my daily life. And that's, I feel that's important too. And I, I believe I'm quite, I'm quite, deter quite determined in everything I do. However, I do feel that when it comes to habits, and that's also the reason for the daily practice sheet, like if it doesn't become a habit, it's easy that we stop. So when you can when you can incorporate it in a life that is normal and not have to change everything, it is definitely easier that it sticks with you and becomes a good habit in your life, uh, even like an improved habit in your life. Yeah, for sure. I feel like that that aspect of adding things into our practice rather than focusing on what we have to subtract or what we've told ourselves we have to subtract is one of the ways in which we can really make powerful transformations when that which we choose to incorporate that what we're adding into our practice feels like it's of a paramount benefit for our well-being for our evolutionary process, you know, incorporating a daily practice from whole. I mean, just from the breath practices, I'm like, man, I love that Wim Hof practice. I want to do it. And I'm like, well, you know, like, why not breath of fire too? Mm -hmm. And pretty soon it's like, if I actually follow through with that, I'm going to feel all of those impacts that we explored in such a deep way in in a relatively short period of time you know a few minutes of my day and some you know everyone's relationship with food is so incredibly personal and i wanted to speak to that for just a moment because as we're moving into the venus sequence exploration we are looking at you know, our emotional bodies, our physical bodies, our mental bodies. And we have all of these ideas and all of these emotions and all of these cravings that we attach to the food that we consume on a daily basis. And what we're looking at here is exam not only being able to examine those things, but to release the ones that are no longer serving us, the physical cravings, the emotional attachments to certain types of foods, the self-soothing that we do with our food, and also the ideas, the mental ideas that we develop like, oh, I have to have such and such a food or else I'll feel bad, um, or I have to not have such and such a food or I'll feel bad. You know, those are some ideas that are very, very prevalent going across our society. It's like, oh, if I eat anything with this ingredient in it, it's awful for me, you know. And all of these things are up for exploration in the Venus sequence. And I can't think of a better way to support our process through that than to really like engage in a process of upgrading the nutrition that we're taking in, upgrading the level of absorption that we have from the health of, and well-being of our gut, upgrading the amount of tissue structure that we're able to build with, with this you know, system, and then also coming into deeper, better sleep and allowing the integration of the things that we're doing through, an, through a venous sequence process to actually really come in and integrate into our systems. We've got to have good sleep for that. If we go through a deep immersion into the Venus sequence without having our these four systems like really well supported, you know, we're 
our Venus sequence is going to skate through this kind of like, to me, may skate through a, a more surface level than we could otherwise have. So I, I just can't think of, of something better that, that's more supportive than this. And it's why I've made it the basis of, of my programs that I'm using, because, you know, as the cells detox, we're going to release things like traumas. We're going to release things like conditioning that we got when we were children. Very, very powerful. Yeah, you know, that goes back to what I was saying, with can, which might sound a little bit either emotional uh, or psychological or mystical, depending on how the word lands. But becoming transparent for me, it's definitely about innocence and purity. And it starts with the denseness, it starts with the body. So where the body becomes purer and then the emotional body, uh, we can work there with more awareness because we're more grounded in our body. And then... You know, when we're grounded emotionally in our body, well, then this machine here can kind of find its place in relationship to that and not rule our lives completely, which Steve as well was mentioning about, you know, or Terry and Steve, I guess, you know, feeling the response from, from the body of how we move through the world. And for me also, of course, as a six line body, that is really those components when they are in place, that's how spirit can start to move through. And that's when also the soul has a place in this vehicle and where we can have that meeting, that sacred union, uh, where the heart is, is part of the home of, of the spirit and the soul. So for me, it's definitely part of, of that journey. And I often say, you know, bod the body, the body, the body. And it doesn't mean that the body is more important, but it's definitely just a place to start and to clean up. And as long as it's not cleaned up, it's going to affect all the other areas is what I feel. All the more subtle bodies are going to be positively influenced as we clean this out and support it. Um, and the same thing in the other direction. Yeah, I wanted to definitely address the, um, for people who are in Australia and in Europe, um, in Australia currently, this particular product that I'm, that we're talking about is not offered by the company. And um, so for that reason, if there's somebody who is deeply committed to engaging in this process, I'm willing to explore, and this is also open to those in Europe, but I'm willing to explore a system of how we can get these, um, this, physical support to you through a process of ordering and then reshipping that those items to you where you live. Now, obviously that's pretty circumventing some of the systems. There may be customs issues that need to be dealt with and other forms of things that I don't have a personal um, awareness of, but that is an availability that we can speak about on an individual basis that I am willing to take part in if this is a type of support that you would like to explore. John, did and, you know that I used to do that with dance shoes all over the world? Did you? Did you really? Import and export, like the brands here, we get them over there. I There is probably not the problem with customs I haven't had yet. So <laughs> I feel kind of, this is a, this is a course that is worth worth the support if that's needed. And, and in Europe, there is a system set up in Europe to serve those who are in Europe. What I have noticed about it is that the cost shifts pretty dramatically in Europe um, for being able to receive, receive these items. Um, I'm not sure how that would look in terms of shipping you know, shipping costs and those types of things to reach what Bella is talking about to, to kind of get an order and then reship it over to Europe. But again, I'm, I'm willing to, to do that for anyone who is committed to, to engaging with that. And um, so I, I just want to put that out there so that 
so that it's clear what is understood. Um, and I'll also just share that the way that the these foods come to the business is set up on a network marketing model. That means it goes from person to person to person. And so the, the way to be able to access them is, is going to be through Bella or myself. Um, Terry is actually on and there, there are a few. Kelly also um, is involved in this. And for some of you have already organically reached out and engaged in, in receiving some of these um, these foods and are already beginning that. So that's a pretty fantastic indication of, you know, just how this kind of functions in this group as, as we're all kind of creating this collective energy together of, of de personal development, you know. Yeah, and I have to say that that's the main thing that I have had to overcome. And we were speaking a little bit today about trauma and Oscar was mentioning separation, polarization, othering mm -hmm. in, in, wor in different words. And I definitely can feel in myself that I've had quite a big judgment against that business model, being somebody who went to business school and who you know has been around for a while when a lot of people has tried Renew Skin or Airborne, or I can't even remember all the names, you know, when they, or Healy a few years ago. And I, I have like a little bit like of a almost allergic reaction to when people are in my inbox that I have no idea who they are and they are asking me to you know be representing something or they are pretending that it's a it's an it's an opportunity for me when actually they have no idea even who I am so for me that's been something that's taken me eight months no ten months today to even sit here and and be in a way representing something in the program that I really care about. And I really care that this program is in, in integrity because it is about wholeness. Uh, so I feel that's important to say. So even if I don't completely feel that this is the best uh, business model, the products and the results that I've had with the products are speaking for themselves. And I've had to stop looking from that perspective perspective of what doesn't work and really see the value of what works and that's why still you know yeah we're here and if I can do anything to get those products to to Europe or to any of you I I am definitely 100% for that yeah absolutely and I, and I do also want to share that on that note there is never a requirement with this company for anyone who wishes to to uh, in, engage with their products that you ever have to share it with another person. There is no requirement for that whatsoever. So, <clears throat> so if you wish to understand more about that system and how, how it's distributed amongst um, its customers and the brand partners who represent it, I'm more than happy to go into depth in kind of individual conversations with that, just to understand what, better understand what some of the um, perceptions may be, which are always individual. And I'm happy to speak with anybody who's curious about that more in depth, so. Yeah, and I guess um, my part in this as well is that I, for me, this holistic support is super important. So I feel, you know, for me to look at the whole picture of somebody, like when you start with this, I would love to look at the whole picture. If you've ever done any sessions with me, I have like a quite big intake form because I, I like to know the background and the scope and where you are right now. Mm -hmm. So that's part of like, if any if anybody who is in whole signs up for this, I would love to have that conversation so that we can support you holistically on this journey mm -hmm. so that I want to that to be clear as well <laughs> beautiful yeah so we have five minutes and beautiful we yeah we can invite Leslie if you have questions and Terry uh if you have ads I guess to what has been said already because you have also tried the products and yeah let's see how how much we can get in here in the little last part of, of this call yeah
I found that you've answered most of the questions I had that would be relevant for this call without going deeper into the next European conversation. Um, because one one question was, do you still eat food? <laughs> um, and you answered that. Um, and the other one, the only reason I asked about the chemtrails was because we don't know what's coming onto the organic growth, onto the organic farms. Mm -hmm. That's where I was coming from with that. Um, is the same coming out of those as well? Um, I mean, I guess that's the cool thing with that is if it was that you could only that you could eat only organic and then glyphosate wasn't a problem, you know, then we wouldn't need perm at all. But the fact that there might be chemtrails and other ways that chemicals come into our food, that's actually when we want something that in a way can, you know, filter that out, that problem out from our life. So that for me, in a way, would be yeah. one more reason for why to support the body with with yeah. Mm -hmm. in mm. that yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah and um, I also I'm also glad, Leslie, that you brought that up because I wanted to just mention that what I've seen is that people who follow the strictest of the strict diets and only consume organic foods, my mother being one of those people, um, she was unable to, without the benefit of biomedic, really ever recover full functioning of her system without being the strictest of the strict mm. and even that the process of of rege of regenerating the health of her gut was such a slow and gradual process because she grew up or she lived the majority of her life in Iowa which is where I grew up and that is one of the primary areas in the United States where there is a great deal of glyphosate usage. In fact, all across the Midwest, as well as portions of, of California. And it comes all the way out to across the Dakotas and down through Colorado. And, you know, it's just, it's really everywhere in our foods. Mm -hmm. And, and what we've seen is the turnaround in using this, this, whole system of addressing all four of these primary pillars of well-being um it's so far beyond just consuming organic foods because these super these shakes i mentioned they're superfoods the nutrient density that they have and the high level of nutrient um uh that that the foods, the way that they create the foods, they harvest them at peak nutrient density and they are all um, live dehydrated on site. That means there's no transportation. There is no denigration of the nutrients from farm to your body. So what we've seen is that just having a, a fully organic diet is often not quite enough. We need a higher nutrient density and we need a better system of, of repairing the gut that allows for the removal of this chemical. Even when somebody, you know, commits to being 100% organic, oftentimes there's some type of glyphosate coming through the water, coming through the air, depending on where you live. And oftentimes that damage isn't, isn't repaired until some of that chemical is able to be removed from the system. So. Yeah, no, I love it. And the, the day the other week that you shared about the gene key connection, just that was sort of the full body shiver. <laughs> so I'm excited for you and I to have the next stage of this conversation. Mm. For sure, Leslie, I, I'm looking forward to that as well. And just finding out what can work best, you know. Mm. Mm. Harry, do you have any uh, anything you wanted to chime in? 
about? No, no, I just uh, was uh, having, um, you know, I, I was just thanking, I want to thank you and Bella. I know Bella's not right there right now, but uh, for the opportunity to hang out with you guys a little more, I always uh, enjoy uh, hanging out with you guys. And, uh, and of course, uh, yeah, I feel great. I, I don't really have anything to say uh, other than I've been doing great uh, for sure uh, with this uh, kind of nutrition and uh, it's more people that have, have these foods basically would raise the frequency of the entire planet just by itself <laughs> it's not really that complicated maybe one thing that i can offer to leslie is that in every time of change foods have always been like a huge catalyst to every single times of change and this is a wheel, so it keeps going in circles. So we're there again. So uh, that's pretty much the quintessence of it. Thanks, Terry. Yeah. And Terry, just quickly, how, how long have you been using these products now? Mm, four months, I believe. About four, four months. months, or I'm yeah, starting yeah. on my fourth that's, month. So three and a half right. months. That sounds about and right. It's, yeah. it's just... It's off the charts. I've, I've really like, I dove deep in the last month and a couple of weeks. I like, I'm taking like some of the other pretty uh, intense, uh, like the first three months you want to detoxify, get all the glycophate out. Once you tend to your gut, your, your gut is healed. Boom. Then you can even explore. There's like, there's so much depth here. Uh, like I, I'm drinking these green drinks in the morning that are like absolutely mythical. Like it just, I, 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 I'm just going through life and it's, everything is easy. You know, like, like a resistance comes uh, forth and it's just like, and I pass through. It's just not even an issue at this point. I don't even, I'm not at all worried about anything. Which is beautiful. <laughs> yeah, that's it pretty seems timely for me because um I've certainly noticed my own body in the last 12 months has gone through a tr well, is going through a continuing transition where I don't want the same food. I don't even want as much food. I'm eating so much less. Yeah. You know, and evolutionary wise, I feel that, you know, I, I've sort of got this, you know, knowing that this is where we're going. This is it's not meant to be what we've made it. It is meant to be easier. My body is simplifying. Um, and it, it was almost through a process of, you know, the undoing, going through the usual habits and then going that's just sitting in my gut or it's making me feel this or it's making me feel that. So it was kind of a retrospective realization of what was actually happening to the point where I could then enjoy embracing it. Um, you know, more than the, the embracing the realization of the, the, the body upgrade um, and transformation that's going on so for me this is very this is almost like um it's like a natural next piece of this transition process for me yeah I'd, you know just as a reflection to you about that i've been on such a long um and somewhat involved process of trying to find a way that food can support my body with the condition that mm. it carries. And over the last 10 years, I've experimented with every type of diet that I could find, whether that was the ketogenic style, it used to be called Dr. Atkins, um, but ketogenic, a paleo diet form. I've used functional medicine with hair testing and yeah. loads of supplements that I'm taking to try and balance the minerals in the body. And, um, I've done all of the vegetarian diets, um, with the incorporated versions of fish or just eggs and milk or 
even the v, the standard vegan style for short periods of time, that never really worked for me very well. Um, except for I've done both forms of the raw vegan diet where um, you're either consuming your, the majority of your calories through carbohydrates or the majority of your calories through um, high fat. And um, the one that I felt the best on, the one that I actually felt that my body thrived with was the high carbohydrate raw vegan diet out of all of those things that I mentioned. And I actually very much enjoyed that. And, and ha there was a part of me that wished that I could continue eating that way for forever. But I only managed to stay with it for 40 days because, you know, we're human beings and I love to share food with people that I care about and people that I love. And, you know, nobody else that is going to join me in consuming, you know, four pounds of fruit per day and a salad that's like, you know, it, it literally took me 70, at least 75 minutes to consume the salads that I was eating because I would you know it's like 16 ounces of mixed greens you can buy in the supermarkets I would take that whole thing it's like a big box like this plastic container I would dump the whole thing in a giant bowl and then chop up an apple an avocado a cucumber a bell pepper and all this other stuff in there and it would literally take me between 75 minutes and 90 minutes to chew the whole thing. I just got <laughs> sick of doing that. And now like that was my six superfood salads at, at, per day, you know, and now I have using Purium, I can consume that in five minutes. It's like, it's the easiest thing ever. And I don't have to chew anything. <laughs> I love it. And um, I had even gotten so, tired of the process like my body was just so bogged down digesting food because I kind of just threw up my hands after a while and was like you know I'm just going to eat whatever I want because nothing that I've done except for the one that I mentioned makes me feel good but it wasn't sustainable for me you know and um you know now it's like this situation is completely different where Every time I eat, I'm excited about eating. I feel amazing eating and, and I love it. And I love having the shakes that I have because they're delicious. And I, I love, Terry mentioned, he's branching out and exploring lots of different products that the company has. And I love doing that. So, yeah. so I don't Thank know. Thank you for you've shared. Yeah, you're welcome. I realized um, that I could like prepare for my next call behind the scenes yes. and not turn everything off oh. at <laughs> one hour. <laughs> well, well, there we are. Uh, you know. I wonder if it's the sixty-two that I'm gonna I'm gonna do in the inner circle with Ashley, which would be one of those gene keys that are part of of tryptophan or tyrosine or phenyl. How do you say that? Phenyl anal. Phenyl Oh, I that think. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it, I find it difficult to get um, pronunciation guides for um, amino acids that we don't talk about very often. Um, I haven't been able to find, you know, an, an exact, but, uh, you know, if, if I come across it. <laughs> I mean, maybe because I am going to host that group on the 21 quota rings. So, I, and, you know, I've told you, John, before, in some way or another, I would love to bring in some of this in that yeah. as well because it has to do with the biological function and maybe yeah. then we will have a way to understand how to pronounce all the amino acids well, and also a new mean, thing today don i have learned forever for at least 30 years that there are eight amino acids that are essential so i am really curious which one is the nine maybe <laughs> maybe maybe it's really only eight because i've heard both of those things too okay. and that I've heard that there's only eight that you really need. And the ninth, whatever that ninth one is, it's not that it's not, it's not essential. Um, because the other one, like, and, and you don't even have to consume all of them at once per day, but it does make it really easy when 
you know, the form that we described today in, in, in with the super amino 23s, it has all of those, it actually has the eight and they're in straight amino acid form. They're ready to be absorbed. They don't have to be broken down. They're just immediately useful. Um, you know, that's one thing, John, as well, and, and Leslie and Terry, I think the cool thing here is like, yeah, we are super nerdy. Like, I'm like, what's the ninth amino acid? You know, like, I'm yeah. super nerdy about these things. It's like, it's my life. And I, I, a lot of the products that now I can just switch them for Perium. So that's one person that this works for. And it also works for the person that doesn't even know what an amino acid is or that an amino acid yes. is a protein. So the cool thing is that it's really something that so many people can use. And it doesn't matter if you're a beginner or super advanced or a nerd in this area of, of life because it's about yeah. your body and your well-being. Yeah. And that um, I'm going to look up that phenylalanine now because, Bella, that pertains specifically to you and because that's gene key two and gene key eight. And you know, that one has to do with sweeteners as well. So I wonder, I mean, that's a kind of interesting thing too. Like what happens with, with aspartame and esophagm K and like these things that have to do with that as well. How does that throw off, uh, off the natural, you know, metabolism of that? And yeah, I, I mean, that I, I feel like this is just a field that is waiting to be explored by somebody who's a total like nutrition nerd to bring in the gene keys and how it really functions in the body and the things that we're consuming that are what impacts those things are having. You know, Purium is just kind of taken the approach of like, you know what? We're just not going to have any of that in there. We're only having whole foods. There's no added sugars in anything. There's no binders. There's no synthetics. Even in, you know, there's lots of things we might call supplements, things that come in the form of capsules and tablets and stuff, but it's all just food. And, and I'm going to say that too, in terms of taste, with somebody who does a lot of greens mm. and, and, you know, green food and wheatgrass, I was super, super surprised how sweet it is, but it is because mm -hmm. of the fruits that are in there. And I was yeah. quite reluctant in the beginning because I've been more at keto, which is very, very low sugar for many mm -hmm. years. So for me, it was a surprise. It was so sweet <laughs> in, mm -hmm. in taste. And also a little bit, you know, from what I used to do in sugar content. But again, it took me 10 months to really say, okay, when I'm on this, I feel good. And the same thing that you were saying about the digestibility and the green drink, like I really feel that it's the body likes it. And then, you know, who is that the mind that says this content is not the perfect label according to my mind? Or is it my body that says, wow, I can't wait to drink this thing. It feels so good. So that's been something yeah. again where I have had to like kind of stop oh, here judgment. and come here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there was one more point I re just remembered, Leslie, that I'd forgotten to mention about you talking about the potential contamination of foods, even when the there's a lot of attention put on on it being organic or beyond organic, which is how this company functions. After the foods are harvested at peak nutrient density, live dehydrated on site with no traveling before the nutrients are locked in. When it gets to our, our main headquarters and facility for moving into the formulas, the formulations of the, of the food products, um, the, the foods are quarantined and then subjected to five levels of additional testing to ensure purity. And um, I've never seen a company that has higher standards for both the purity, the nutrient density, and the importance of the formulations being right for the body, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really, I mean, the, our formulator is one of those like savants. He's, he's pretty, pretty phenomenal in, in how he has sourced all of the number. I mean, he's dedicated his entire, he's kind of like, the Richard Rudd of nutrition, you know, from what I can see. And honestly, I can't wait to get Richard Rudd in touch with this stuff because of the impacts on those amino acids. It's pretty exciting.
And I guess that's another discussion I would love to have in general with all of us, but also specifically with some of you that might want to go on this journey. And that's your PHS together with Purium, you know, because for some of for some of the types or for some of the, the colors, it could be a little bit tricky, but I think it's about finding and tweaking and understanding, you know, why you're doing it that way. Uh, so that's also another another route to, to go. And I think that even PHS is going to be interesting as we go into the to the attraction like how are you how are you digesting life how are you taking in life how are you taking in even another person in terms of intimacy like th that's part of this journey as well that's in mm -hmm. one way or another it's it's part of the conversation with phs one thing that keeps and i'm aware of your time bella um what one just to throw in one thing that has kept coming back to me today tonight has been the shadow of Gene Key 40. I mentioned this with Thierry earlier. Um, the pre the pre um natal key in our in our body. And to me, this would be very much related to that as well. And I can't exactly how remember how it how it how it goes, but there's a pre and a postnatal key and that affects our microbiome. And if we're consuming you know, right or wrong, or and it creates the exhaustion in our body. And I've always been a bit more curious to dive into that, but that feels relevant for me to be mm. related to this piece as well. Yeah, that, I mean, I, I just love, uh, Leslie, just you're, you're obviously like clued into exactly how the gene keys or particular gene keys can be experienced directly through our physical body and your awareness of that. I mean, it's so pertinent. And I feel as if many, many of the functions of our, of our body can be correlated in different ways to different experiences. And honestly, I, I had just wanted to chime in and share that when I first started using Purium, I experienced an almost immediate, within two weeks, I experienced a visceral activation of my radiant sphere. And then later on, um, within about 90 days of using that, I experienced also a full activation of my purpose sphere. I became completely aware that that was fully functioning through my body. Whereas I had no awareness of that before. I, I looked at the purpose sphere, my purpose sphere. I was aware of it and I knew about how I intellectually understood it, but I didn't have a direct experience in my body of like, oh yeah, I remember when I became type one diabetic that the thing that I remembered feeling like I used to feel was invincible. That's the city of my purpose sphere. And when I became diabetic, it was like this smackdown that, hey, guess what? Not only are you not invincible, you're not even gonna be able to experience your inner strength on a daily basis, you know? Or sorry, the invincibility is in is my attraction sphere. It's on on the nine, but I felt um, I felt strength leaving my system. You know, Majesty is sort of a, you know, that's kind of a um, abstract concept in a way of experiencing. But I lost my strength, and I I lost my ability to attract things, and it was like boom. All of a sudden, that stuff like tapped right back in. So, yes, <laughs> they're related for sure, Terry uh, or Bella. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's five, 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 five here. So it's ah, a that's magical the key. number of here freedom. That's the time. That's the time. To you say about it? I've got to go to bed now, so I should have had what was it, blue specks or red oh, yeah. specks or something. First they are yellow, and then they become red sleep. right before sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> so funny. I love it. Yeah, this is nice. Like this little small, small coming together. So, yeah, 
thank you for coming. Thank you, John, for everything that you shared. Very structured and, you know, super valuable. And thank you for both you, Terry and Leslie, for coming in and creating a bit of the dynamism in the call. Uh, thank you. Anytime, for anytime I can hang out with uh, both you and John and uh, Leslie uh, is a pleasure. It's just a uh, it's so fun. I'm having uh, so much fun now tapping into the body and uh, hanging out with people. For some reason, it's like magical now. Everything's like, all the simple things are magical all of a sudden. But uh, yeah, have a good, I'll see you guys later. Hopefully we can hang out again. Well, I'm going to be on if anybody wants to come in. You have the you have the link in the inner circle. But Leslie, my, you're with us in dreamland, I guess. And Terry, you might be somewhere. <laughs> you, you know what? I I would want to, but I got to go past the flyers. That's what I was rolling. I was rolling the flyers. And I just noticed my data. I have two days left for my data. And I like I have one gig left. So okay. I think I'm going to have to pass. <laughs> okay like keep your data for the most more important things and i'll see you soon <laughs> at least in two days <laughs> yeah. bye, guys. night night thank, thank you. you thank you bye. so much bye, bye. <laughs>